Former President Olusha Gwabasanjo has denied claims that he hates the people of the Niger Delta origin. He said this in an open letter to respond to accusations by the leader of the Pan Niger Delta Forum and chairman of the Board of Trustees, Ijo National Congress, Chief Edwin Clark. Now, Clark had previously slammed Obasanjo over what he called a disappointing display of hatred but, uh, of the people of the oil producing states in Nigeria. Well, joining us to break that down and discuss it is public affairs analyst Sonny Maduka, Niger Delta rights activist Ankyo Briggs, and legal practitioner Tamano Williams. Thank you very much, gentlemen and lady. Happy holidays. Yes, thank you very much for having uh, me. Happy holidays. Yeah. All right. So let's, yeah. let's go into the conversation. Let's just dive right in. This has become a war of words uh, of sorts between the, uh, the, the um, elder statesman and, of course, former President Ulusha Gwabasanjo. I'd like to quickly pick one of the most in interesting things that he pointed at, um, you know, to. He said that the, the former president talks tough uh, and insists on resources found in any state uh, being something that is, you know, that belongs to the entire country, but then he keeps mum over the issue of gold in Zamfara State. So, Ms. Ankyo Briggs, I'd like for you to start with that, because I know that um, this is a, a sore point for the people of the Niger Delta. Yes, uh, thank you for having me again. Well, I mean, uh, Chief Ike Clark uh, expressed the, uh, the feelings of the... Um, of the people of the Niger Delta region. It's an ongoing um, irritation. It's not just only your passenger. We've had this over and over again. But yes, definitely, um, when you begin to behave in the way uh, and say the things that your passenger said, and I was on that program, actually. Um, I was a participant on that program. Uh, he came late to the program. Uh, the gentleman, the secretary of the John National Congress, um, was expressing the position of the Johns. And he started banging on the table and shouting, literally, just behaving very unstatements like, unelderly like. And what really just boils down to the fact that the Niger Delta people, and particularly the Johns, feel very aggrieved by Obasanjo. Let's not forget that he destroyed Odi, he completely destroyed Odi in the year 2000 and killed thousands of people in the quest of looking for uh, people that uh, had killed uh, policemen. Yes, we, that, uh, that was the issue at that time, that to raise down a whole community because you're looking for seven youths that's over and above the call of, um, of, of what he was supposed to do. So yes, I agree with Chief E.K. Clark that uh, we feel that Obasanjo has a very special uh, place in his heart for hating Ijo people and demanding that um, what is in the ground belongs to uh, all Nigerians. And he, he even went as far as saying, what did you ever do to, uh, uh, to bring what was uh, there? What did you do to put it there? It was just very disrespectful to a whole people and very irritating that he can't do that in Zamfara and so many other places where people are mining resources that belongs to Nigeria, as he claims. Let me come to you, Doctor. I will come back to you, Ms. Briggs, because I, I, I'm more interested in knowing why you think that there's that hatred. But, um, Doctor Madika, you obviously don't have a, a dog in this fight, but uh, there are parts of the Southeast that have oil. And we know that as we speak, the Southeast <coughs> is feeling the pinch of having the short end of the stick. So, but again, in this issue, you might not necessarily have a dog in the fight. But do you necessarily agree that? the former president hates the Niger Delta people, or he was just making a case uh, as to the fact that maybe the people in the, Ni in the Niger Delta uh, have a, a sense of entitlement of sorts, and that's why he reacted the way he did. Uh, 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 let me start from every leader in Nigeria. Every leader in Nigeria always loves Niger Delta region. But I don't think they love the people of Niger Delta. There's a difference between loving a region and loving a people. So uh, Basan just saying it is not a new thing. All of them love Niger Delta because of the resources. So not because they love the people. Because if they love the people, they will have known what the people are suffering right now. 
Let me give you some example. If Obasa just said they love the people or the Niger Delta, who are those people at the hem of a favor and NPC today? Are they Niger Deltans? <coughs> who are those at the board of Niger Delta? Are they Niger Delta people? If you look at the, 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 the percentage of those people who own the oil blocks, 99% of them are outside Niger Deltarians. So, but I'm just saying that, oh, I love Niger Delta. <coughs> I'm just wondering, do you love them because of their common wealth, because of the resources they have? But in actuality, people are dying of pollution. People are dying because they, their, life, their means of livelihood is being eroded. People are dying, or just of recently, we, we, we hear of another mock at um, River State. So what are the state, what are the government doing? Yeah, they love it. You see, when Nigerians talk, especially the leaders, when they tell you that Nigeria is indispensable, is indissoluble, there's nothing else they are talking about the Niger Delta. Or that's the only thing that's keeping Nigeria together. Nothing else. Which of the leaders are able to say, oh, because Niger Delta are suffering, let's do something for the Niger Delta? I give you an instance. In Canada, when the Quake people decide to say, look, enough is enough. There was a consensus. There was a national conference where they said, okay, look, we have seen your suffering. Let's see what we can do. But all that I know that the club was talking about is, look, it's time for you people to look at Niger Delta and not just on the rhetorics, on practical ability. As of today, <clears throat> Niger Delta is nothing but to OBJ, the golden egg, hmm. kind of, kind of or, or the farm, be for national commonwealth. Okay. But everything about Niger Delta <coughs> is assumed to be nationalized. Okay. Just like uh, uh, he mentioned, it's not only Zamfara that has gold. We have a lot of mineral resources in the north. How many of them have been able to come into the mainstream to be apportioned as national treasure or a national resource? I, I will so come. I will come back to you to push to push you further on that you. on that issue of our, our wealth and resources found in the different regions of this country. But we're being joined by Doctor uh, by Barrister Tamano Williams. Barrister Tamano, you obviously have a dog in this fight. You're from the Niger Delta. I'd like to you know backpedal a bit. Um, just as Doctor Maduka has said. Nothing really, in his words, have been done for the Niger Delta. Um, and he's saying that the, uh, the um, Chief Clark is asking that the government pay attention to the people in the Niger Delta. I want to go back to the, the, the fight for um, the people of o the Ogoni Kingdom by Ken Sarawiwa. We know how he passed. We also know that the, this administration, I'm talking about the Buhari administration, promised that they were going to make the issue of the cleaning up of the Ogoni axis because of the, you know, the oil spill by Shell. They were going to make it front and center. As we speak, I do not know what the situation of things are. Um, do you necessarily think that maybe our leaders are only paying lip service to the Niger Delta for what it can get from it? Uh, and again, what about the people of the Niger Delta? Are they doing enough to get the attention of the government or to, and I'm not talking about violence here, I'm talking about peaceful ways of getting the government to keep their words and their promises to the Niger Delta? Uh, my, my take on, on the matter may be slightly different from the two earlier speakers. Look, Nigeria is not the only country in the world, okay? And before Nigeria became a country, we have other people who have been emulated. Uh, the gentleman talked about Canada. Uh, look at America. Look at Singapore. Look at um, Germany. Look at Russia. You see, Nigeria is, is one of the funniest places where people come and express views that they don't even believe in. Now, let me take the first point. For Obasanjo, former military uh, ruler, professor, former uh, second in command to Motala, then head of state, then he became president. He chose a, su a successor in uh, Yaradua. After Yaradua, he chose Jonathan. After Jonathan, he supported Buhari. Obasanjo has literally chosen almost all the leaders 
who had led Nigeria. Now, the common denominator is that, from my perspective, from what I've read of him, he does not have any clear, clear empirical developmental vision that is organic and genuine. Now, let me break it down. You, for any country to develop, it's not their resources. A country development is underpinned by the capacity of the citizens. Okay? Even if you bring $10 trillion into Niger Delta, the place will not develop. It's not about, it's not about a batting job. The Niger Delta people have a picture of development which tend to look as if it's resources, it's money. It's not money. If it's money, NDC will have developed Niger Delta. Okay? You, you have a Niger Delta a building authority. It will have taken it off. The problem of Niger Delta is not about money. It's not about resources. It's about the people's organic philosophy. Look, I have been a local government chairman. You can go and ask in Okrika for three, three years. Of the three years, I was suspended for about four months. But as I speak now, you can take a media tour of what I did, you know, community by community, village by village, word by word. As I speak, I live in my quiet house without a policeman. Look, Obasanjo hates Niger Delta. It's not a news, and it's of no consequence. Now, coming to our elder statesman, uh, uh, Clark, look, Elder Clark had had his own penalty shot. Uh, let me take you back to the, the, the UEFA Champions League, where uh, Terry took the penalty. He had been a minister. He had been a father. The question would be, all these years, what people has he groomed? What philosophy has he entrenched? So that when he's no longer there, do we have that unity of purpose, hmm. that vision, that philosophy? I think we don't have it. I'm coming to that point. Now, generally speaking, Japan does not have really issue of natural resources. Are you aware? Even the water they drink is imported after Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But Japan is developing. So our problem is not uh, a passenger does not like us. He can he may not like us. We don't need him to like us. Okay. We need to like ourselves. <clears throat> Sorry, we don't like ourselves as Niger Deltas. Eh? Then entrench a philosophy of development. Look, enough resources have been given to us over the years. But I can tell you, we have nothing to show. You have the amnesty program. So much money was sunk in the amnesty program. The program was not designed to bring our boys to become entrepreneurs. People went in there and developed themselves. Today, the boys are still back with skills that are not applicable. Interesting. You know, so Interesting that you went there, um, Pastor Williams, but just hold on. I'm going back to, I'm tossing back to Ankel Briggs. This is something that you worked directly with, the amnesty program. I want to put it straight to you because it's, his, it's, it's something, it's a position that he's taking. He's saying that the people of the Niger Delta, if I'm quoting him um, rightly, might be the problem and not necessarily the leaders. What's your take? Um, first of all, uh, let me uh, make a very quick uh, correction. My activities um, with the amnesty program is purely based on the fact that I was amongst others um, that definitely made sure that peace came um, to, the, uh, to the region by making sure that the then armed uh, agitators from Bielsa to Delta State to River State, the people that brought the economy of Nigeria to their knees in the creeks, um, were made or convinced that it was time to come out so that um, Nigeria could have an opportunity to, uh, 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 to keep to the promises that Yaradua was making at that time, but my involvement, therefore, was not part of participating either in training or in running the program or whatever. But yes, I was a key uh, participant in making sure that um, our people came out of the creeks. Having, having said that, look. So have they come out of the creeks? That's the question. Because he's saying that nothing has really changed. Well, of course they came out. Of course they came out of the. Of course they came out of the creeks. Um, uh, somebody like uh, my brother, who is now uh, uh, king, uh, Ateke, uh, uh, king uh, Ateke Tom, 
Uh, he was in the creeks, uh, deep inside the creeks. But today, he's in Okochiri. He's, um, he's, um, he's a king. He's sitting on the throne. So, of course, they came out. People came out of the creeks. But um, the point is that there is no doubt that people in politics have failed Nigerians across Nigeria. But I will restrict myself to the Niger Delta region. The politicians in the Niger Delta are no different from politicians in any other place in Nigeria. We have wrong people doing wrong things in the name of politics in Nigeria. It's not, uh, it's not uh, specifically restricted to the, uh, to the Niger Delta region. Now, when we talk about the NDDC, the NDDC um, was as a direct result of agitation that I also was part of, that Obasanjo created the Niger Delta Development uh, Commission for the nine oil-bearing uh, states at that time. Um, now, when you create a commission and then you are in total control of that commission and you are the one deciding politically who are the people that are going to run that commission and you're owing the commission and um, the uh, whatever monies you claim to be given allocated to the commission in the budget is actually only on paper. Uh, that you, you have already broken the legs of that commission. They are the people controlling the commission. The commission is controlled from Abuja. The commission is controlled politically. Well, I'm not a politician. I'm not going to go into politics. Yeah, can but I quickly just can opinion, I quickly just come in there talking about owning the commission? Yeah. What's Professor yeah. Ponde? He's from the Niger Delta. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely. He's from Everybody. the Niger Delta. Can we be blaming Everybody. Abuja? and the everybody center has, for Professor Ponde's has, issue. Everybody that has been appointed have been appointed from the Niger Delta or at least from the oil producing states, from uh, people like uh, Onyemu Gochuku all the way down. But the reality is who is appointing them and of, on what purpose? Are they appointing them? You cannot appoint people that have failed in government, uh, government elections, that have failed in uh, senatorial uh, elections. You now compensate them in the name of NDDC and come back and blame the Niger Delta people for not holding the people accountable. Holding who accountable? Hmm. Who held Obasanjo accountable? Obasanjo was owing. Obasanjo refused to pay the total money due <laughs> At the time, it was due to the NDDC. Okay. People should find out how much money is owed the NDDC. Okay. Today, look at what is happening. We are in a government today that has handled the NDDC worse than any other government has handled the NDDC. Look, the failure of development of the Niger Delta region is a strategic failure, is a planned failure, the, 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 the issue of developing the Niger Delta region cannot be done from Abuja. It can only be done by the people of the Niger Delta okay. from the Niger Delta. And we can only do that with our resources, not by resources that people take from us and pretend to give. You can't take what is mine and give it back to me. And Because of time, I want to quickly... Uh, be given to us. Given to us for what? It's my money. How are you giving it to me? Okay. All right. Let me, because of time, I want to make sure I, I get everybody's input. Back to you, doctor. Um, she's, she's made an interesting okay. point. Um, and we, we've delved into the NDDC issue that you brought up that I wanted to, you know, push you back, push back on. But let's talk about the sincerity, because she's also touched on that, that you cannot develop the Niger Delta from Abuja. You cannot try to change certain things without <laughs> using the people in those areas. But again, I go back to Professor Pondi and the likes of the, the former governor of Akwaibom and the sen former senator, uh, Goswil Akwabio. We've seen all of these people who are supposedly leaders in the Niger Delta, who would be the same governors who'd be complaining at the center about how these issues are being dealt with. But when they get to those offices, we do not necessarily see them um, trying to develop the Niger Delta again. Are Nigerians the root cause of their own problems, just as the legal practitioner had mentioned in the beginning? Uh, first of all, Nigerians have our own problem. We have our own problem. Um, like uh, the lady said, uh, the major problem we have 
in this uh, country is structural. You can't just bring out a project without giving out the process and the procedure. You know, most of the time we wake up only to hear a project has been inaugurated in Nigeria without proper feasibility study. That's a problem we have. Nigeria needs to go back to the drawing board. For instance, we've been talking about accountability in Nigeria. How many of us can talk to our you and say, look, so so amount has been given to you. What and what have you been used? What have you been using that money to, for in Niger Delta? So the problem is that we have two-way problems. The problem from the leaders who don't care and who are using the deformed constitutional uh, you know, authority, or you can talk a deformed structure to rape the people in any how they want. Then the other way is the people who are so docile to ask for accountability from their leaders. So at the end of it, we end up blaming one another. So the Nigeria system is all about blaming. We're not looking at the fundamental problem. Mm. The fundamental problem by this NDDC is that somehow the people appointed there are not supposed to be even local government chairman. The people that are appointed there are just political appointees. They don't care. They, 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 they steal the people's money. And nobody can go and talk to them. Well, you, I'm and sorry, you cannot them, say that a political appointee care. does not care. His job is to deliver on the functions or whatever he's called to do in that office. So I do not know if it's they do not care no, or it's just that the person who appoints them does not care for feedback. I'm telling you authoritatively, 90% of our political appointees are there for their own is a stomach infrastructure. Just like the chairman said, how many of them could be able to point out what they've done? I am here in the village here. I'm just looking at, I'm part of the NDDC. I'm looking at what and what have NDDC done for my state. And if you look at it, I've been able to check. I know how much I've gotten to have your state as part of NDDC. And what have this money gone to? Gone to? And nobody can challenge the authority because the police, the security agents are with them. So we are here in a system whereby the fittest kills the, the weakest. So that is the problem. Okay. Our constitution has a problem. Mm. We need to go back to drawing board. And I think that was what uh, Clark was drawing uh, OBJ into. Let's go back and look at where we have made messed up. Okay. See how we can correct all the imbalances. You cannot come to my house and collect all my resources, and then you give me a peanut. And in that peanut, you are telling me not to talk. Okay. You slap me even with my even with my, 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 my resources, and you tell me not to talk. Nobody can do that. It's only a slave that can do that. We are not slaves. Okay. The NDDC, Niger Delta, and Nigerians. We should be treated equally as Nigerians. You cannot tell me that all the 20 appointees in the management authority of NPPs and, 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 and NPC are all Northerners. What are you talking about? That's a what whole kettle of fish on its own. That's a discussion for no, another no day. Niger Delta people that can hate an NPC. So That's these are the problem. Well, Doctor, that's a conversation for another day. But finally, because we're almost out of time, um, by Sir Tamino Williams, let's look at the legal perspective here. One of the things that, of course, um, the elder statement was also, you know, um, pointing to is going back to restructuring, talking about original government and all of that. But the question I always ask is, are we just talking about it from a political perspective or are we really, really sincere about going back to that? And if we do go back to it, how ready are we um, to deal with it? Because some people will say, well, we did it very well back in the day, but this is 2021. If we revert to that, how realistically can we accomplish it? Now, uh, uh, from the legal perspective, uh, you see, uh, law, essentially is supposed to engineer you know the kind of society the people want law does not on its own bring about development is the aspiration of the citizens the people now our constitution the one we are, we are working with now of course it evolved from from 1979 from 1960 to 1963 there was in an entrenched principle of de de derivation 
where fifty percent of resources goes to the people who own it. Okay, in that time, uh, of course, the our elder statesmen later properly uh, encapsulated that, that the West and the, and the North were able to develop. Now, a lot has changed. A lot has changed. Today, mm. our leaders, our followers, even our children, they have a different philosophy. They have a Bukanya philosophy. They want something now, here, and immediately. It's a microwave error. <laughs> so the, what, what, what are you going to change? Mm. President Jonathan had a conference to discuss this. You know. So my solution is law essentially cannot cure our problem. Okay. The current constitution, if well, sorry, if well followed, can deliver. Today, the governors have 13% derivation, okay? Mm. Are the governors accountable to the mm. people? Mm. We quicker, have to go. Right? As I speak to you, okay, we can't talk of one single project that NDC has done in Okrika that can bring about sustainable development. So my, my the sum is that, look, we need to sit down together, have right. a proper assessment of where we are, where we were, and where we want to go to. Okay. That discussion and can lead into a, a, a new dawn. Unfortunately, I'm so sorry to cut you off, but this is the most we can take. I want to thank you very much, uh, public affairs analyst Sonny Maduka, Niger Delta rights uh, activist Ankil Briggs, and legal practitioner Tamano Williams. Thank you so much, lady and gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Our pleasure. Yes. All right. Well, we want to thank you all for being part of the conversation tonight. We hope you enjoyed yourself. But we'll leave you with a clip in memory of the late anti-apartheid icon, Archbishop Desmond Tutu. I am Mary Anacle. Have a good evening. Mm -hmm.